Today is an excellent day, and that is because today I'm going to be turning this Model Ace pickup truck into a V16 monster. We're going to aim for over 4,300 horsepower and hopefully break the record for the fastest kind of car that I've made uh, on this channel. But also I want to get an engine with the highest horsepower that I can, much more than what I did before. So let's go. Before we go too far, I just want to say I have a website now. That's the place that you can get these beautiful Bugo stickers. Uh, they are really awesome. I'm shipping them out myself, so if you're interested, just buy one through the website, and I will write you a handwritten note as thank you, as well you get free shipping, and they are $5 US. <laughs> so, yeah, go check it out. Anyway, back onto the Model Ace. Um, so I'm thinking I'm gonna call this Hellhound for no reason in particular. And the video that I'm trying to sort of replace, because it's not a very good video, is actually the most powerful car I've made, which at that time was 3400 horsepower, which is not very much. I've done a lot more than that in the past as well. Uh, I made the bulk power Rhino, which has 4300 horsepower, but that body isn't in the game anymore. And I really have been struggling a lot trying to find a body that would swallow a max size V16, but this thing actually does it, which is awesome because it also looks really cool. So I can finally make something kind of old school with a bit of new, new school flair because I'm terrible at old school cars. But basically I've just been testing cars with this sort of setup. Obviously if we're going to make something as ridiculously fast as possible, we also need uh, full quality and the best components we can get. So it's carbon fiber, monocoque carbon fiber longitudinal front engine because I really want all-wheel drive, coils on the front, I'll explain that in a second, multi-link on the back, it's just good stuff. So I made myself a brand new engine and as you can see it is a maximum size 21 basically 22 liter V16 which is huge. Uh, in fact it is the biggest engine you can currently make in the game uh, and it fits <laughs> which is the important part. Now I want to do dual overhead cam but I can't, it won't fit. Um, but look at this, 114% on the width. It's just 14% too big. That's basically what that means. But if we jump over here uh, and go to, say, Wishbone, which is probably more preferable, then it's going to screw this up because that was 154% and overhead cam does not fit anymore. So that's why it's coils. It's been a really long time since I just kind of let loose and made something ridiculous. And I just kind of felt like it today. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. We're going to try and tune this up to the maximum uh, and hope for the best. I mean, I'm doing it with overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. That's not great. It's not ideal. Obviously, we want dual. We can get much higher RPM out of this. But yeah, this is what we got to do. So in terms of these things, it's going to be the best of the absolute best, and I think that Forged is actually going to be our friend here. Lightweight is better for RPM, but this engine, as we've already established, is not ideal for RPM. We want to be able to have some decent torque, and no, I do not care what the power curve looks like at all. As long as it's got power, that's all I care about. VVL profile and stuff, we'll deal with that in a bit, and obviously I I'm going to preemptively turn this all the way up <laughs> because... Actually, we have VVL, don't we? We need to turn this all the way up. Turbos, ball bearing, uh, max size intercooler, custom, biggest everything, and we'll come back to that. This is gonna get funky. Obviously, injection with direct <laughs> erase premium. Ooh, it's a beast now. <laughs> I am spamming the quality as I go up here. And uh, I think, well, none of this baffling stuff, 1,180 horsepower right out of the gate. So the exhaust was extremely restrictive, it's now up to max size, and that means we're at 2,389 horsepower. We're getting close to that sort of record I had before. It's not exactly a record now, is it? Um, but we need to get up there in the RPM pretty much as high as we can. And yes, there are going to be issues here. Don't worry about it though, that's all part of the fun. 3,071 horsepower. <laughs> okay, I've got another 1,230 to go before I hit my goal. Assuming that it's even possible to do in this version of the game, I mean, things have changed, so I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll have to see. Okay, so turning the VVL profile down, we have managed to make uh, an extra 100 and something horsepower, which is decent. Uh, next, it's going to be the turbo. This is where things get interesting, um, and including adding more boost to the car. We still have a little bit of octane to work with, but not really that much. Um, yeah, I've got a ways to go though. Alright, that's a cool uh, 3480. Basically, I'm just messing with the AR ratio and the turbine. 
easy thing to do that I haven't done yet. Full fuel mixture, we're gonna need it. And uh, yeah, that gives us a lot more octane to work with. But that's all we get, like that's all we can do. Um, I think I'm gonna turn down the RPM limit. 7700 is probably fine. We don't wanna blow up the engine immediately. We'll save that for after the fact. So our compressor is causing issues in terms of the airflow and I can't make it any bigger, which sucks. <laughs> so that's about as good as we're gonna get there. The turbine being restrictive actually improves power, at least on the top end, and that's pretty much all I care about. So that's what I've been messing with mostly. Um, but we still have a long way to go, quite a long way in fact. The current power curve is not ideal. Basically, uh, we're, when we're idling, we're making 160 horsepower or something around there. <laughs> and from there, it just kind of explodes as you get higher in the RPM. This thing makes max power at 7,700 and max torque at 5,000. Pretty big difference there, but that does give a really good power band right in between. Um, <laughs> Awkward to say on something so ridiculous. Something I have not messed with is the cam profile, however, uh, turning that up is not giving the full returns I'm after. Yeah, we're losing, we're losing power to an extent. It's still roughly the same. So if we go the route of having very high compression, our max power is going to be somewhere around 3700-ish. That's 3776, um, which is a lot of power but it's not quite again what I want so I'm actually purposefully turning down the compression so we can get more out of the turbo because I just feel like that's the right way to go and yeah that's an obvious answer right there 3800 and all I'm doing is turning down the turbine literally just dropping it down we should hit 4000 doing this oh never mind we're gonna need a bit more AR ratio 4000 horsepower just that easy and I haven't even touched the boost yet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Here it comes. Okay, apparently not. You know, we went from a curve that isn't too bad to war crimes, uh, but we have managed to make it up to 4,200 horsepower, which I'm very happy about. I want to break 4,300. That is the goal now. We got to break it. Um, still got a lot of octane to work with. Still got some work to do. So messing with the cam profile, I managed to give it a torque bulge at uh, 4,200 RPM. So now we suddenly have a little bit of grunt, which is nice. <laughs> Still only 90 Ron, which is cool. Uh, basically, that just means we get a little bit more potential going. And, ooh, 4,280 even. Nice. With some tweaks of the compression, we are up to a very fancy... 4,452 horsepower, that's 5883 newton meters of torque, which is insane. Um, so I uh, I think this is now officially the highest horsepower engine I have made on this channel. Pretty darn good. Um, I was messing with the aspiration a little bit, but it doesn't seem to do much. I think we're at the point of diminishing returns, like I up things and it doesn't do enough to justify it. Um, we are getting closer and closer to what I would consider to be the max power you can make in this game. However, I don't know what it currently is in this version of the game. Like, things are about to change drastically in terms of the turbo setup, so this kind of level is probably not going to last long. Everything is going to change when the new update comes out, but for now, like, that's pretty decent. I think I remember seeing somebody get up to 4,700 horsepower. I don't remember where that was, but, uh... Yeah, um, I, I think it's definitely possible to do better than this. And, I, and in fact, I would encourage you to go and do better than this and post about it in the Discord so I can see. <laughs> it's always cool to see this kind of stuff. But for now, I think that's going to be it. 44.53 and yeah, torque. <laughs> just, just a little bit of torque. All right, the only changes I'm going to make now, I've reeled back the RPM just a, just a little bit so we can get... Uh, like, I want to keep a decent power curve at the end, so I'm gonna leave these broken things in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Having broken stuff in there is fine for something this insane. Uh, it'll probably grenade itself. That's kind of part of the fun. Um, so we'll probably have to, uh, I mean, it depends on what I want to do with this. Usually engines that are this quick have issues with cooling, so I gotta keep that in mind. In fact, that's one of the first things I need to change, because otherwise I'm gonna forget. And yes, I'm going for an all-carbon look with uh, some beautiful blue. It's almost like a Ford Racing blue. That's not really an intention of mine to make it that color, uh, but I just kind of like the blue. Let's go. And there's all the stats for you. 627 kilos up front. 
That is not light in the slightest. And you know what? I feel like we're probably gonna have issues with wheel spin. Just, <laughs> just the suspicion. Okay, so this being a mod body, we have a lot of options to choose from. The one that caught my eye the most was the truck, uh, just because I, I find it to be cool. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference between these two is. This one claims to be a pickup, and the other one is a van? Oh, I guess the picture is just wrong. But we also have stuff like these two-door convertibles, more like coach-built stuff. <laughs> we have open top, although I don't think I'm going to do the open top. Yep, you know what? I think the easy choice is pickup truck, and uh, we'll do away with the convertible top as well. Uh, if I could chop the top, that would be great. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> Full-on speedster now. Uh, I think what I want to do, I mean, we're going to have issues with wheel spin, so the wider, <laughs> the wider, the better. Uh, to an extent, maybe that's a little bit too wide? It looks like it's a train car with these wheels. Oh man, I'm a sucker for a large bed and this thing gets big. <laughs> oh man, it literally is a train car. Oh, and you can get rid of the tailgate too, that's so cool. Goodness, okay, um... Yeah, okay, I have some thinking to do here. <laughs> okay, I, I think I've decided what I'm gonna do. We'll have to wait and see what the wheel spin issues kind of bring to us. Also, what the- Oh, I can just chop the entire body. Oh, man! <laughs> okay, mod bodies are awesome. But basically, I just want to see what the wheel spin looks like at the end of this and see what happens with that. And then we'll decide how wide to make the fenders. I've already shrunk them a little bit because this just feels like too much. Uh, however, something maybe a little bit more subtle like that really does feel like a cool chop top kind of car. The unfortunate part of this is that this thing has coils on the front and uh, coils cannot drop very low so <laughs> we'll have to do some work and wow a lot of colors to choose from. Let's just quickly work on the stance first and we'll come back and do the body. Because uh, yeah, all wheel drive, um, sequential maybe? Yeah, you know what, dual clutch. Full ratios, I know that that's going to make wheel spin worse, uh, we'll get to that, don't worry. Um, 411 kilometers an hour, that is not slow. I'm just skipping through stuff now just to kind of see where we're at. Uh, I want to give this thing a stance because I want to be able to design based on its stance as we're going to have it, instead of designing around, uh, well, whatever it could possibly be. Oh wow, the <laughs> wide wheels do not look good at all. Um, Except on the back, those look pretty sweet. But this thing is all-wheel drive, keep in mind, so... I don't know, we do need wide wheels in the front. The turbo sticking out, oh man. And the engine bay. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing it's long, because there's a full engine in there. Now, it really just looks like a Hot Wheels car. I didn't intend for that, but... I'm kind of down with it. I, I really don't mind. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to stick with it as is. Okay, I've got some bad news. This is as low as it goes. It is going to be a monster truck no matter what we do. And I'm not a fan of this kind of clipping going on here. It's also glitching out whenever you look at it. Not a fan of that. However, uh, the car itself looks pretty darn sweet, so I think I can excuse it. We'll just have to cover that up with some kind of bumpers or something, which are absolutely not going to be period correct because this is a monster truck. And if you're curious, yes, you can shrink that piece down all the way and... Uh, yeah, it's just gone now, I guess. I mean, now we can get full max size tires. I, um, I'm honestly just gonna, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I don't see any other way at this point. Let's hide the body. Well, not the body, the uh, chassis. Oh yes, the way it was meant to be. <laughs> now this is awesome. Okay, this is officially my favorite body now. Look what I just did. I cut out the sides as well. They're just gone. <laughs> so now we can just roll with no sides, which is exactly what I was going to do anyway, so now we have a full V16 hanging free out the side, and obviously we're going to hang some pipes out the side too. Uh, <laughs> turbos are intaking directly from the wheels, which is unfortunate, but I think at this point the wide tires and such, they're just a style point, like that's just part of the design. Uh, I think we can probably get away with a little bit less in terms of this as well. And I might bring back the, the tailgate, I'm not sure. Yeah, whoever made this, absolute genius with the body stuff. Super, super cool. Big fan of this body. Um, and yes, now, now we're going flat. I like everything just kind of hanging out. It makes it way, way more interesting. 
anyway, let's uh, let's get on to the details. So we got a lot of options for paint, and uh, yeah, wow, lots and lots of options. Lots of stuff that I want to do as well. Let's definitely go two-tone. Okay, so we got the bumper here. Bonnet is the front thing. I'm not sure the bumper just doesn't seem to be anything. Primary is there, secondary here, convertible top, and the tray. So the tray color is going to be this stuff in here, so I think I'm just going to instantly make that a uh, black color just because I feel like that works better. I want the convertible top to match the body, so I think I'm going to work towards that. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm interested as well to figure out how to change the color of this. That's probably trim or maybe wheels or something because it's currently chrome, uh, but we'll figure that out in a bit. Okay, I need to decide what color to paint the car and that is very, very tricky. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna paint it all and then we'll have to come back. Uh, but at the moment, I'm thinking, thinking improperly, about potentially painting it something extremely bright like this. Um, I know it doesn't match the motor, but we can always change that. That's not a big deal, but man, it's gotta be something classic. I'm a big fan of dark colors. I especially like wine red colors for some reason, although I haven't owned any cars that have been that kind of shade, at least not yet. <laughs> oh, fluorescent, fluorescent orange is always an option in my book as well. Okay, so here's what it looks like in that blue that I came up with. I'm a big fan <laughs> of it just being a full color match as well. Uh, and I'm wondering what else can we do? What other kind of colors should we try and bring out here? Okay, so the front is now chrome. I think it, it has to be chrome. That just kind of makes sense. Okay, let's make the trim chrome because I feel like the trim needs to be chrome. Although, ooh, that matte color kind of blends everything in. Okay, no, it's, it's gonna be matte. <laughs> Uh, you know what, actually, some of it's gonna be chrome, some of it's not. <laughs> this is apparently a wing mirror, so I'm glad I found that so I can recolor it. I'm not a big fan of the checkerboard pattern, so it's it's nice to change it. And the bed is currently chrome as well, I, uh, I can definitely get behind that, nobody's ever gonna put anything in there. I've gotta change the color of this engine though, it's just, it's not gonna work in that shade. And then the last thing I guess on my list would be the wheels, um, which I feel like they have to be white. No particular reason. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That's going to be nice. That's going to be real nice. And a V16 in yellow under the hood. Yikes, this is a bit of a beast. Um, and I'm liking the way things are going. We're going to have to narrow those front wheels, though. This is a first for me. This is a, a first for me in making a car that is totally, totally different than, than what you would normally think. Um, this is obviously, I mean, this is an ancient truck. Not exactly my forte in terms of design. <laughs> you can see wheel spin is definitely my forte. However, uh, things are going to be interesting when we get into Beam and G because it's going to look like this. <laughs> so apologies in advance for that. But we will be running without the chassis in uh, automation just for the sake of sake of looks. I've been stalling, but it's time that I got on to the fixtures. I'm going to start off by doing something real quick. i got to fix this front grille. It is bothering me that it doesn't have any big holes in it, uh, because I want to see that engine. Okay, it has now immediately occurred to me that there aren't many grills that kind of match this old school style. Really not very many at all, actually. That's uh, awkward. Okay, so I am finding out some of the unfortunate downsides of this body. It is an excellent one. Uh, but it does have one thing that is kind of kind of in the way, and that is that uh, I've got to cut a hole in this <laughs> so I can see through. But, um, yeah, it doesn't work. There's something behind it, which sucks. We're so close to being able to have the engine in the forefront, but not quite there. Okay, I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands and uh, create for myself my own grill, I guess? just by uh, using a giant rectangle. <laughs> I think that seems fair. Okay, that looks way, way better immediately. I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of this. <laughs> um, I think all I'm gonna do is just increase the size of it a little bit more and... Yeah, okay, we're going places. We're, we're getting there. I think it's the small details that matter, so I'm gonna put in my own badge on the front. Uh, although we probably should have something pop up as well. It's gotta be the both of them. Because, oh yes, there is a chrome version of my badge. Thank you again, Taff. And it shall be uh, placed on the front of this car. I'm always going to put it on stuff that I like. And in this case, I like it quite a bit. 
But while I'm here adding details, I may as well put on something else cool, like a 40s style rocket ship future thing. Oh yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, that is perfect. All right, big things to work on next. We need headlights and uh, we're gonna need oh, a couple more features, just a few. Okay, so looking at an actual picture of a Model T, which is, I mean, I don't know if this is supposed to be a Model T, but I'm not too worried about it. Uh, basically, the headlights actually come off of the fenders. Don't worry, this is not a final design. Uh, but we have no fenders, so it's going to come off of the grill piece. Uh, I just need to find ones that work. These are supposed to be police spotters, which I thought would be really thematic, because it's a hot rod and it's got police lights on it. I don't know, I, maybe I'm just not old enough to understand, but I'm trying to, trying to do something cool here. Oh, that is really, really sweet. Okay, they're floating, I know, and I'll fix that in a second, but man, those are perfect. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Okay, this is turning out really, really nice. All right, we officially have headlights, and uh, I suspect that they work as headlights. I probably should have checked that. Yeah, okay, they're gonna work as headlights. That's a good sign. <laughs> okay, next thing on my mind, I've got a, I've got a, I'm, I've got a few things on my mind. Just let me, <laughs> let me explain. Uh, we have 16 cylinders, and they are currently venting to the back. That doesn't seem acceptable. I think we need to vent them straight out the sides, and. Um, yeah, okay, I guess that's not exactly the case because it'll come out of the turbo, which it currently is, but I want to make it look a little bit more realistic, so let's go. Now the obvious choice is to add side pipes. Um, <laughs> we have a couple options for side pipes, although it's going to gum up the actual like look of the exhaust because <laughs> what on earth is going to happen here is uh, we're going to get bent in all the wrong ways. But the kind of gist of it is that um, if I uh, move these around, which I'm indeed doing, um, okay, this is this is pretty darn sweet. It's gonna just build some weird exhaust pieces that kind of mess with things, uh, which is just what this game does. And as much as I'm a huge fan of this and it is very Hot Wheels, uh, you also can't open the door. So <laughs> maybe it's not the most practical uh, practical exhaust application. However, that is cool as heck. Oh man, okay, it's gonna be hard to say no to that. But this sort of junction here is gonna, gonna keep me thinking. So even all the way out there, it still makes a weird loop, uh, which is very strange, uh, but Okay, um, we'll just have to we'll just have to pretend. If this wasn't turbo, it'd be a lot easier because then I could just dump the exhaust right out the side, which is kind of what I was hoping. Uh, but no, not the case today. We're gonna have to do some funkiness. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Uh, no, I was not dropped as a child, at least not to my knowledge. Although it's possible that I was dropped and then forgot because I was dropped. But don't worry about that. I, I just have some very interesting ideas about things at times, and one of them is just to put pipes directly into the tires. No, it does not make any sense. I, does, does any of this make any sense? That's a rhetorical question. But I'm gonna roll with that for now. I just couldn't find a good way to get the pipes to go evenly off the turbos. It just wasn't looking right, so I kind of decided to do this. It was either this or have stacks, and I'm just morally against stacks, so I just figured that was a uh, better thing to avoid in this case. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the rest of the hood, because I feel like we need some sort of induction. Like a massive scoop or some representation of the fact that there is a V16 under the hood, basically two V8s stuck together making a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount of horsepower. <laughs> These are aptly named Edelbrock, which I think is going to be great for this. Uh, we do have ITBs, although they are facing the wrong way, so it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I, I kind of want to put them on anyway. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm kind of toying with the idea of having two scoops on there. Although I'm not totally sold on it, uh, one scoop actually doesn't look good either. I think I'm just gonna go for subtlety this time instead of going crazy. I really wanted to try something nuts though. <laughs> it's got some nuts under the hood, that's for sure. Okay, don't take that the wrong way. I didn't mean it that way, okay? I swear. <laughs> Alright, so the doors have been handled. The mirrors are existing. 
And uh, yeah, I think it's time that I went on to the back end. I still have to pick rims. Can't believe I haven't done that yet. <laughs> it's kind of important. I mean, the wheels on this thing are so huge that the rims basically decide the fate of the entire car. I could ruin it or make it just with these. Okay, I'm gonna go white walls. I, <laughs> I think I have to. I just, uh, I owe it to this car to go white walls, which also means I've shrunk the wheel size down. Uh, they were 23s, they are now 18s. I think the car is gonna thank me for that one. <laughs> Hopefully the wheel spin likes it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, back end and I think we might be good. We don't need too many details. This car is very strictly uh, a <laughs> showboat and nothing else. Now peeking through history, I don't think that these things actually had rear lights, but that's not going to stop me from putting them on anyways. I just feel like it's uh, <laughs> thematic enough to do so. I don't know, I find it kind of cool. Let's go with those. Okay, I'm doing some funky stuff just to get some definition on here. Uh, mostly just shrinking down these pieces and uh, just trying to get them so they, they stick out mildly, um, which just gives it a little bit of... It, it just gives it a nice line just to have some metal stamping. I don't know, I thought it was an interesting idea. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for my uh, Hellhound, at least in terms of design. Maybe not as crazy as I thought it would be, but I mean, there's always room for improvement. I'm a big fan of the front end, I think it's gonna be sweet. But now it's time that we make the thing actually drive and I should probably give it a trim name. All right, on to the actual graphs. Um, admittedly, these are not gonna look the greatest, especially right here. Just ignore all of that, please. <laughs> 420, it says 370 now. I'm not going for a ridiculous top speed. I actually just want it to drive. Strange, strangely enough, I know that's not usually my MO, but uh, wheel spin in every gear, that's kind of to be expected. I'm going to give it a rear wheel drive bias, even though this thing is probably quite front heavy, <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to work. Okay, it's actually suggesting that it be much more front bias because, again, there is a lot more weight on the front end. Uh, so this is maybe going to be a very weird setup. 60% front, 40% back. Strange, especially because of how narrow the uh, front wheels are. <laughs> Not really what I intended. On to the tires themselves. Well, if we increase the size of these, the wheel spin does go down and this thing actually gets into drivable territory. In fact, the front wheels are now bigger than the back wheels. I can't say that I like that though. I think they're just a little bit too big. I, I mean, ideally I'd like them to be somewhere around here and then have these just be massive. Um, I know that that's probably not gonna work. <laughs> I mean, the fact that it's all-wheel drive is already hot rod blasphemy, so... I mean, I'm already breaking some rules here, aren't I? Like, I think there, or maybe just a bit further, is like a good athletic look. Like, it looks like, it that, it looks like it's athletic, it looks like it's a strong contender. 250, maybe we can get a bit bigger than that, but... The wheel spin. <laughs> oh no, and the understeer as well. Goodness. Oh no, the game wants me to get rid of my monster truck wheels. <laughs> Dang it, game. This is all I had going for me. Drivability is really high, but uh, yeah, it shrunk considerably. I'm not a fan. <laughs> get back here. You know what? Screw drivability. Let's just go for the good stuff. And by the good stuff, I mean looks. Um, looks are pretty much all that matters. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna go slightly lower offset, slightly smaller front wheels. I've got the drivetrain at 60% rear. Again, that makes no sense, um, but uh, it does it does it matter? <laughs> Not really. This car is gonna be so wickedly fast that uh, I am afraid that we're gonna shed tires at any point. Um, it's probably just gonna pop things instantly. So it's good to have more width, it's good to have more like diameter just to soak that up because otherwise we're not gonna be able to live. Um, it, I don't think it weighs that much. Okay, it actually does weigh quite a bit, never mind. Okay, let's get onto the brakes. Obviously we have a lot of stuff to do here as well. I've got six piston on the front and the back. The fronts are gonna need to be massive and the backs we can just kind of leave where they are, I think. Uh, maybe just up a little bit. Yeah, that should be fine. I just noticed this thing gets 55 liters per 100 kilometers. That's actually better than some of the Karen commanders. <laughs> okay, so I have given it downforce and it does have, I mean, it has a very small amount of downforce. This thing has no wings, so I'm not predicting it's gonna do very much. Um, downforce all the way up and we get a little bit understeer. <laughs> 
<laughs> Understeer is just an inevitability. 150 k's an hour, it's just... <laughs> It's gone. Um, I, I put it at max cooling airflow. I know that's not necessarily required, but I think it's necessary because, again, these turbo engines, they overheat so quick, it's not going to be able to drive. Uh, I just know that from experience, so I'm, I'm putting that all the way up just preemptively. I put it up to... Um, a bench seat in the front with handmade luxury infotainment. I'm actually going to put that at no infotainment um, and we'll just up the quality of these things. I know uh, that this messes with the weight as well. I've got all the best stuff going on here uh, and I'm just going to go for high quality stuff, I guess. Low quality safety. No safety at all just kind of makes sense to me. Suspension is currently active sport uh, because I figure that makes the most sense. And then uh, it's semi-active passive with a race preset to start us off on the old tuning front. And then I have a lot of work to do on the rest of this um, because we're at 60% sportiness in a car that is very, very much meant to be sporty. <laughs> and then, I, I, you know what? This car is very much meant to sit in the showroom. That's it. It's got a lot of power. Don't touch the throttle. Never drive it. Sit it in the showroom. That's it. Okay, I've done some more tuning, and the car's looking a little bit better. I had to shrink the rear tires, which I'm not a fan of, uh, but I also have gotten drivability up to 100%. Sportiness is 75.6. We actually go over a G in the corner, which is a good sign. Um, yeah, the brakes are a little bit smaller, but that's kind of fine. They're much better for utility. Uh, maybe these ones are a little bit too small. Yeah, you know what? That's looking mildly closer to being drivable, so I think I'm going to... Send it? Is that it? <laughs> Is it time to try this thing out in BeamNG? Well, I guess so. Um, I'm, I'm afraid. I, I think it's going to be a, an absolute rocket ship. And I am <laughs> terribly afraid, but also incredibly excited. We did actually manage to lose a lot of weight there, which is good. Um, so hopefully that makes the driving ever so slightly better. <laughs> Probably not. We kind of need a lot of weight. You know what? This thing is going to be super, super fast. Let's go for it. <laughs> Beam NG, here we come. Alright, so here's what the truck... I've been calling it a car, but it, it is technically a truck. It has a bed. <laughs> it's a truck chassis, is it not? Uh, but yeah, this is what it looks like in Beam NG. Pretty interesting, except for the body hanging out. That's the stuff that we didn't see. Uh, or the, the chassis pieces, I mean, it's all carbon fiber stuff, but... It does kind of sit in the way a little bit, which is unfortunate. However, I've got some excellent news for you. Um, this thing is the reason that you need an airspeed <laughs> marker there. And also it's got a big hole in it. I don't remember doing that. But um, the wheel spin is significant, to say the least. Let me, let me just do a pull and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're in sport mode in the ESC, sport mode in the gears. It's a dual clutch, so all I have to do is just mat it, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, stuff happens. Uh, the first time I tried this, it actually popped the, uh, one of the front tires, which is really, really funny. We're doing 300 kilometers an hour, and it just can not handle it. Although it doesn't actually suffer with a lot of the issues that I have with these super high-powered cars, including, but not limited to, massive overheating and also the destruction of turbos and other things inside of the engine. So the first thing I want to do with it, I mean this car is not made to turn at all. It, it is made to go fast in a straight line and to have massive power. That's, that's literally it. Um, but the reason that I'm on the grid map is because we have a couple of options in terms of just driving out into nothingness and seeing how fast it can go, and so that's exactly what my plan is. <laughs> and keep in mind, this wheel spin, this wheel spin, span, oh geez, is happening with the ESC on. If I took it off, things would get even more <laughs> interesting. And yes, we are currently doing 370 kilometers an hour. No sweat in this thing, none at all. And from the looks of things, I mean our kilometers are higher than our actual airspeed, so it is possible that we are currently spinning wheels right now at 370 kilometers an hour. Brilliant. <laughs> now this is exactly what you need to do with this much engine. Goodness. Okay, so that was loud and it was also awesome. Uh, I'm going to cut off the ESC entirely and I want to see in sport mode how bad the wheel spin is. <laughs> okay, so 
it, it's pretty bad. Um, without any restrictions, this thing moves. Holy. <laughs> okay, I gotta say it now. This is one of my more favorite creations. Probably my favorite one of this year so far. Lots and lots of good stuff happened so far, but this... Now this, I like. <laughs> In the end, it does actually have a 50-50 bias, all-wheel drive. And, uh, I mean, that's 50 front, 50 back. Much bigger tires on the back than the front, but things got shrunk quite a bit. Honestly, if this thing was rear-wheel drive, it would be a contender for the wheelie competition. Uh, if we could somehow get decent, like, wheels, I mean, real slicks is what I want in the game, but, um, if we could somehow get actual slicks, all that power to the rear wheels, there is no stopping the wheel spin. It would just be absolutely unending. And <laughs> I definitely want to see that happen. We probably need to make a rear wheel drive version of this thing on stream. But you know what? I am so happy with the way this thing has turned out that, uh... I really don't know what to do with it. I'm just blinded. <laughs> it's definitely a contender for the games, though. I really like having just absolutely ridiculous creations go head to head, and this is definitely one of those. Um, but yeah, <laughs> what should I do with it? Like, it's very much made for one thing, and that one thing we've already done. Uh, top speed is where this thing shines, and looking cool is also a, just a habit that it has. Yeah, you know how it goes, you're looking fast. You're, you're going cool. Okay, somehow I think I might have said those in the wrong order. But, it's not really good at anything else. Like, basically nothing else, actually. It's not practical, it's not good on fuel. It's uh, an absolute disaster in the corners. You can turn entirely one way and it doesn't actually turn. Uh, all of the weight of this thing is in the front of it, so it's a bit of a monster. <laughs> and it doesn't really drive straight. Uh, for obvious reasons. So it's very much a one-trick pony, but I think that's kind of a good thing. <laughs> anyway, let's just go blast into a wall or something. That just seems like the proper form for this car. Maybe even less gears were the right answer, but a big high impact? Ooh. <laughs> it's actually holding together pretty darn well. And considering the fact that it still technically drives, I'm gonna say it's a bit of a beast. Okay, this video is probably long as heck, but I really want to try something. Just one lap around a circuit with a car like this, with traction control on, because I am not going to kill myself on purpose. Just one lap, that's all I ask for. Well, automation test track, it's time that you brought out your dead because the grave digger is here. Let's go for a run around this track. Uh, and I'll try to do the best that I can do. It's been a while since I've gone down here. Uh, I'm not timing this because I don't think that's a good idea. We're not going to get a good time, <laughs> but I am just going to send it. Let's, uh, let's go. Top speed on this is pretty darn good, but the actual uh, acceleration is not good. I had to sacrifice that quite heavily in order to make the car actually drivable, uh, which sucks because honestly I like massive acceleration quite a bit. It just also leads to terrible wind spin issues. And I think you can kind of see right now some of the issues that this car has in terms of handling, and mostly the front tire is just not actually doing anything, and the car understeering like crazy, uh, which I guess is pretty typical for something all-wheel drive. Um, but yeah, I mean, most all-wheel drive cars don't have 4,500 horsepower. <laughs> most cars in general don't. Okay, coming around this loop thing, I was interested to see what this bank corner would be like. Super elevation generally helps round, us corner, round corners with some uh, speed, but not really able to do it there. Um, this is going to be interesting because this is the fastest section in the track. However, there is a turn right at the end of it, as I have experienced many, many times. Okay. <laughs> Slowly now, let's not die. I feel like I'm driving on ice. Into the braking zone, we're going to take this one wide uh, and slow. Real slow. Okay. Alright, car. Don't upset yourself yet. We're actually really close to the end, just a couple more corners to go, and we'll be there. Full out on this straight, 150 meters to the end, all the brakes locked up, we're not making that chicane, uh, so I'm gonna cut it, <laughs> dock me points, whatever, we're going. You know, it probably was a mistake to hammer it around that last corner, or that last straight I mean, but uh, yeah, we're overheating the brakes, it's just part of the deal. <laughs> Let's, um, oh. Okay, hold on a minute now. 
<laughs> the wheel spin is definitely getting me down. Okay, minor adjustments to the steering are making a bit more sense than just kind of full-on locking it. However, oh man. Okay, I was hoping that we could actually make a lap, and it seems like we might be able to in one piece. Come on, car, just let me have it. Okay, I'm counting that. It was a really scruffy lap, <laughs> to say the least, in fact. But I made it. That's all that matters. And that's it for the Hellhound. It's uh, going to be indefinitely retired <laughs> to a museum. That's where it belongs. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Uh, and also like this video if you liked it. My channel has been like dead this past year. With the exception of the Karen Commander coming out on top. Once again, I had not intended for that one to be so crazy. But... I'm trying to get things back, and I really need your help with that, so please, uh, interactions with this video are very much appreciated, likes, comments, and uh, subscriptions as well. <laughs> YouTube actually tracks how many people subscribe when they watch a specific video, so that would be awesome if you did that. Also, don't forget to check out my website again, uh, the merch is there, the stickers, they're beautiful, I have like 300 of them, it would be awesome if you guys bought some. Um, quite a few people have already and I've been shipping them out and people have been receiving them, which is again awesome. It's really cool to see where you put them because for me I've got a big bag of them, but then to see them on your car or something, it just it pulls the whole thing together. I just love it. So thanks guys. I'll see you guys again next time and here are our channel supporters. I want to give an especially specific thank you to those who have chosen to support this channel today and uh, this month as well. Um, specifically the advanced supporters, the advanced channel members, the ones who give $4.99 Canadian and up every month. I appreciate you guys a lot and everybody else too, my goodness. Some of you have been around for nearly two years, which is just crazy. But anyway, let's get on with it. I want to thank Overlord, QT Bear, Terry Williams, Jean Valpalms, J Pope, Davis Hester, The German Dude, Mickey K1, Eli Mason, and Sleep64 for supporting this channel. You guys are awesome, and the supporters as well. And I, don't worry, I don't forget you. I, uh, I just need something to differentiate the two tiers, and that's the reason why other names get said. But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I gotta go. My voice is done, and it's late. <laughs> I've been fighting BeamNG to get this video done, but thankfully it's over with. <laughs> oh man. More Project Car stuff on the way, more budget updates, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not looking good, but um, I'm trying to hope for the best. See you guys again next time.